you've got Ben and Nate now back. Uh, how good does it feel to have uh, all your starters off of uh, the reserve list and now available as you really dive into this practice week? Well, I mean, again, I don't think that it's just the starters. I mean, we'd like to have everybody, you know, and it is good to have Ben back, just his personality, and then Nate, you know, continuing to to watch him grow as a player. But but obviously, we want everybody back. We want everybody here. We want everybody healthy. Announced or not announced, but named your your captains for for this season. Uh, yep, but I haven't told the team yet. That was voted on this morning, and we'll we'll let them know before practice. So. Um, I'm sure Robbie will put that out after after practice. Players vote. I mean, do you have mm -hmm. do you have any veto power there? Or? No, that's not something. You know, I mean, I try to uh, try to help them understand what I think a, a good captain is, a good leader, somebody that will represent our football team. We have a lot of great guys, a lot of great uh, leaders and players, and you know. So again, um, you know, they they vote on that. That's not something that uh, that I have a you know a real big say in. He's been talking about their kind of philosophy or approach to gambling, uh, for lack of a better word. What's your thinking on your, your willingness or allowance? The NFL like gambling policy? Well, I mean, I think that those are moments where in, in every game, throughout the game, everybody has decisions that they have to make. The players have to make them. Coaches have to make them. Um, and when the players are out there, we, you know, we hope that we've given them enough, you know, advice, coaching, teaching, um, you know, all those things on when to, when to take chances, um, and the techniques in, in which to use. You know, if you're going to gamble, um, and and you don't think you can make it, you know, I mean, obviously we want to stab through the pocket, and you know, when you when you don't make it, that you can ensure the tackle. You know, we just don't want to be, you know, reckless and just, you know, it's always the old adage of. Just trying to make a play, you know, we'd like to make it a good one. Janoris has a, a a lot of that in his past. Well, I mean, there's instinctive players. I mean, I think there's certainly, you know, players that uh, throughout their their careers have been instinctive, and then the other ones that are, you know, I think still trying to develop it. Your experience as a as a player and coach, tough balance between having fresh legs on a team versus having a good amount of veteran experience. Well, I mean, I think some of our veterans, um, fresh legs or younger legs, I mean, I think that however old you are, if you can still play and do your job and, and function and play with the speed that's required uh, to be an NFL football player, then, you know, great. But, um, yeah, I don't – really age hasn't been a big factor. We're just looking at performance and, um, you know, results. So it's, uh, Julio is, is, I think, 32 now. I would you say for him, not not a ton of the guys that age are, are still in the elite class. What's it what's it say for him that he's still getting the job? I mean, I think he's you know, an elite athlete. Obviously, he's been gifted. He's a very gifted person. I think he's worked very hard. I think he focuses on a lot of those things that that help him, um, you know, be able to, to to stay productive, you know, at his age. And and, and I think it's going to be. You know, like, you know, let's say, you know, Roger or Ben or some of those guys that play a lot of football for us. I, I think we have to do a good job between them and myself and, you know, our training staff and, and Frank, like what these guys need, you know, how much they need and, and or how little to, to be able to to be at their best on Sunday. And I think that's uh, you know, something that's evolving. A lot, of, a lot of times over the years, what makes him such a difficult guy to prepare for to cover on Sundays? I'm guessing you said DeAndre. Oh, right. Well, I mean, he's an instinctive player. He, you know, he's got a great relationship with the quarterback. You know, he's a, you know, strong, you know, great hands, strong hands, you know, very good play strength. Um, you know, he's good with the ball in his hand. Breaks a lot of tackles. But I just, you know, all those contested catches that are, um, you know, sometimes we used to joke, you know, the tighter the coverage is, the you know, the better he likes it. So, you know, we'll have to be able to compete and, and play through. You know, some of that contact and, and, and that just, you know, those contested catches, we're going to have to try to compete. Mike, you said a part ways. of your initial conversation with Julio was you put the most on your best players. What would be an example of what you've put on him and, and how he's responded? Well, that goes for everybody. I mean, I, I, that's just something that, that we believe in is that we're going to hold the best players the most accountable, you know, to try to spread that message throughout the team that, you know, we have a standard and we have expectations that we believe in. Um, 
you know, and again, I think just holding him, him accountable to be ready to go. Um, you know, I thought that that was, you know, how we wanted to start the week uh, with, with the group uh, of guys maybe that, you know, hadn't had as much work uh, throughout training camp. I thought that was a great start on Monday. Uh, you know, looking forward to continuing that today. Mike, in what ways do you think Derek's game can continue to evolve after the you know, 2001 season? Just where do you think he can continue to make strides at this point in his career? Well, I mean, I think ball security is always something that's, you know, paramount for a guy that, you know, carries it as much as Derek does, that takes as, as many hits, you know, and, and again, the way that he's built. You know, there, there's guys that are, you know, I mean, they're, they're changing the target angle uh, where they're coming to try to tackle him. Um, you know, I just, reads, I think you can always continue to be better, you know I mean, as, as far as, you know, what, what, what you're seeing and, and where the defense is going based on how we're blocking it. You know, just continuing, continuing to stay consistent, obviously, each and every week. You know, people know that, that he's going to be a large part of what we do. Uh, and, and have to, we all have to be ready for that challenge. Fourth year, how much self-analysis do you do in terms of how you do the job and, and what you do in the job as opposed to when you first started? I mean, I just think, I mean, I'm not really reflecting on too much as far as, you know, I try to focus on improving and getting better and um, how, how I lead this football team and how, how we get ready and, and prepare. Uh, the product that we put on the field is, you know, making sure, you know, that the operation, you know, is clean and that the players, you know, know what to do. And then, you know, there's a whole nother level of, you know, we've talked about this. When, they, when those guys go out there, you know, we have to have uh, confidence in them that they know their job and they're, they're going to, you know, go out there and execute. At that point in time, it's, it's the 11 players on the field. So as far as my reflection, you know, I just have to make sure that we continue to, to not do things that get us beat. You know, emphasize the the things that we believe are important. Coach, from a lot uh, of these players that have come off the COVID list, um, are you monitoring them in any way just to make sure they're they're back on the field healthy and not pushing right into it? Of, of course, we are. You know, we do that with everything, whether they sprained an ankle or or they were away with with COVID. I mean, that's that's everything that we believe in. Um, all the way down to com concussion protocol or, or leading with that. I mean, those are things that, you know, we feel very important. You know, we spend a lot of time with these guys. We're personally invested in who they are as people, um, as, as husbands. As I mean, so it's the whole package, you know, and so we'll, we'll monitor all those guys that, you know, as they come back. What's the challenge of, of evaluating their front seven? That's a group they've invested a lot in, but you haven't seen Collins play. You haven't seen Watt play for them yet. I think you know the skill sets of those players that you can see and you can evaluate. Um, you know where they'll be. You know they may be in different places than than what maybe you know, we've seen in, in in past. You can try to have an idea of where they may be. Um, but again, just seeing how the game unfolds, being able to recognize that early. You know, understand you know who they are as athletes, the length, the skill set, how they've normally played, how JJ's normally played, and you know, the issues that he presents. Um, and then as far as, you know, Collins and Simmons, the speed that they have inside, the length, um, athleticism, you know, all that stuff is, is we try to, you know, at least take into account. Mike, apart from, you know, it's the season opener excitement and just the challenge of the job, any part of you just excited to see the, this offensive skill collection on the field together in a game setting? No, not just specifically them. I mean, I'm excited for, for us, for our football team. I'm excited for our fans. I'm excited to, to get into the stadium with, with some fans, with our fans, um, and just excited to, to coach the football team. And a part of that is, you know, that group that you mentioned, you know, some of those, those receivers. Um, but it's, it, it's everybody out there doing their job, and, and they're a part of it. You know, just, just excited to get everybody that we have available back. Been able to see, I guess, from Lamb and, and Sambrello in terms of them being at the, you know, close to the top of their game or at the top of their game. Well, I mean, I think those guys are still, you know, they had missed some time. You know, I don't think they were full participants. You know, so I think that 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 probably takes some time to, 
to, to get back. And, you know, we always talk about not being able to get those reps back, but we got to try to get them back here on the practice field and, you know, see where they can help us. Hey, buddy, welcome back. Um, you know, I think that we'll see where that is. You know, I'm not ready to, you know, commit to that. But until, um, you know, I find out otherwise, I would imagine that, it, you know, it would be. And, you know, there's a lot of different, you know, roles that guys play on the game and in the game plan. So, you know, we'll see where everybody is on, on Sunday and, and how they, they function within um, that game plan. You've kind of obviously had a very, you know, clear maintenance schedule with, you know, Derek over the last couple of years um, and, and practices and then ramping up and, and whatnot. I was wondering, like, if there, in, in any ways, you know, your philosophy of how to maintain him has changed um, over the years and as he's racked up, you know, more carries. I mean, he does a lot of that on his own. You know, I mean, I think his preparation and, you know, we try to monitor and, <clears throat> You know, replicate some of those game distances and speed you know, that he would normally have in a game. Uh, this is something that we we did throughout training camp, and it's not every every day. Obviously, nobody would would, would want that. Um, but there were you know every fourth or fifth day where we're trying to replicate those outputs that he has in the game, so that you know the the pounding's not there, but the but the conditioning and the speed is there. The way you talked about right tackle yesterday left open a possibility like for rotation. Are you contemplating something like that? Well, I mean, I think what we're contemplating is, is trying to get and develop, you know, a roster that, that we feel confident in in a lineup. And, you know, we, we have guys that are um, very accomplished, that have played in this league, have started in this league, have played multiple positions. Um, you know, so, you know, that that's where we're at. We're not you know, trying to, to do anything other than, than get the best guys out there and, and have guys to, to be ready to, to go in there if they have to um, for, for a lot of different reasons. Well, I mean, I think that, you know, um, as long as guys understand, and, and again, it's just not something that we know that we're going to do or not going to do. It's just, you know, guys that have rotated, um, and me personally, is that if you – you know, communicate and, and everybody's on the same page, like, hey, this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to take a look at. Um, you know, I would say that everybody in my experience has been, you know, on board with it. I mean, whether they um, you know, agree with it or not, I think that if we feel like it's best for the football team at, at any position, you know, that's what we would try to do. You know, he's just, he's fast, he's explosive, he's athletic, um, you know, he's quick, great short area quickness, you know, makes a bunch of guys miss, knows, knows where the first down marker is every time he runs, you know, very aware of that. Um, mentioned the other day that the strength of his arm, you know, as I thought was something that not having studied him was really stood out, um, you know, and so, I mean, he seems pretty comfortable, doesn't seem ever... You know, too rattled. You know, seems like very good composure, demeanor. As far as your captains go, I mean, what uh, what are your expectations for them? I guess you've seen guys handle things differently, and I'm sure you feel like you got a, several guys in this locker room who could be captains. But as a head coach, what do you want your captains to to do? Well, I mean, I think they, you know, they represent the team and who we want to be, and and help carry that message. Um, you know. From, from me, the coaching staff, into the locker room, you know, the players can, you know, ask them if, you know, some guys, you know, may, may not, may not want to come and ask me something, you know, and I think the captains usually can and, you know, I try to, you know, visit with them, but, you know, there's no restrictions on leadership, you know, there's, you know, guys are going to be able to lead whether we name them a captain or they were voted on by uh, their, their, their teammates as captains, that's, that's critical to understand. What's the value of a hostile, packed home stadium in this league, and what, what do you anticipate this year in that regard? Um, you know, I mean, I think that that's certainly um, 
you know, if you can get out and, you know, I mean, you could get ahead in the ball game and you're forcing them to use the silent cadence, you know, and react off the football and, and not go off of a cadence, you know, those are all, th or communication, you know, that's something that's, you know, difficult for us, you know, when we're on the road and it's loud, you know, um, you know so that would be, that would be helpful for a team that doesn't huddle much uh, this week. Uh, as far as my expectations, I, I mean, I, I, I expect there to be plenty of fans. I mean, it looks like people are dying to get back. You know, I mean, this, this game and this sport, you know, people you just kind of noticed come, you know, the end of August, beginning of September, you know, people were just dying to watch football, you know, no matter who was playing, um, it, you know, and, and the people that, that come out, the, the students at college that, it, you know, didn't have that experience, the, the, hopefully the same thing will happen you know, with us, that the people will be in the parking lots, they'll be tailgating, you know, and they'll be enjoying, you know, everything that they, you know, knew before we didn't have fans at games. Communication has been a big thing throughout camp. Now, obviously, going against the Cardinals, they do a lot of tempo, and that creates urgency. But does that create urgency for you guys on defense, and how does that kind of, you know, make the communication even that much more important? Yeah, it just happens quicker. You know, it has to happen quicker, and it has to happen a little cleaner. You can't have a big discussion about it. You know, they're getting lined up. So I think just the recognition of that, um, you know, being able to echo the call and, and communicate quickly and making sure that everybody's on the same page. You know, we don't have time for a team meeting out there, you know, if they're making calls going at the line of scrimmage. Is this offense unique in this day and age in the NFL in any way? And if so, or even if not, what's the biggest challenge of lining up and getting ready to prepare against it? I mean, I think, um, <clears throat> You know, unique. I mean, there's times where people won't huddle. You know, I don't know if it's the extent to which they do it. Um, but but that's what, you know, the beauty of, of coaching is, is believing in something and getting your players to believe in it, which they've done. Um, you know, we just have to, you know, I mean, be able to get ready, get, get substitutions in there quick. You know, they'll sub and, you know, not huddle and stand over the football. And we'll have to, you know, try to replicate that uh, in practice this week.